a poppy here from Aotearoa, more commonly known as New Zealand. Um, I'm just going to present today on the night of the 94th wave, or the ninth wave of creation, of the Mayan sacred count of time. So we've just finished the day, the 94th day, and that was in the energy of eagles. So this was a time where we could actually take the opportunity to rise up above all the surface levels going on and see a, a bigger perspective of of what um, what is. So we are in a very interesting time on this planet. I'm sure that everyone will agree. Um, there's a lot going on, um, and we have. I find that it's best to maintain a focus of what we can do to be the best contributors to creation as possible. So this is where I feel like this teaching and learning of the Mayan calendar um, can help us to to do that, just to be the best that we can possibly be as we keep growing and learning and evolving. So um, I've picked up quite a lot of information over the, la the day wave um, of quite a big perspective and I'm going to kind of address that a little bit after sort of talking a little bit about the, the night wave now. So we've just started the night wave in the energy of 13 reed, also known as corn. So the 13, this is like a, an ascending energy um, to, to really rise up and launch us with the energy of the Tresina that we've just been in to go into the next. Uh, so, so we're going into uh, energies that are very much about protection and strength. Um, where we may stand tall and strong like a reed or a corn plant, um, being anchored into Mother Earth and then the crown of air head reaches up towards the sky, um, receiving information that does come from the, the cosmic axis or the, the source. We can also uh, maybe perceive this as Father Sky. So we have Mother Earth, Father Sky, we're in between. Um, um, conduits or vessels that are, can grow tall and strong. So wherever we are planted um, around the globe, we, you know, it's a time now where we can really go inwards and be still and meditate and we can search ourselves um, and how we are in relating with creation. Uh, the earth is certainly calling us forth to honour her again after um, seeing the harm that, that has come from the eras of evolution that we're actually starting to become more free from. So these are very strong birthing energies. Um, the previous Tresina was in the energy of dragon which is like the primordial mother about birthing and being. So this is um, an energy that we are also in. Um, and because we're in the night and we're also uh, going to spend a lot of this um, night phase in the energy of the jaguar uh, meditation and connection with the earth is going to be very much a theme. Um, so we can, we'll probably find that we we'll want to just turn in and meditate. We just may just be feeling really tired and exhausted. I know that many people are feeling very tired and exhausted and, and even I find that um, I just have to stop sometimes and just go into meditation and breath and stillness and um, receiving many, many visions at the moment uh, about what's going on um, for myself and uh, the greater scheme of things. And we also may channel the energy that we have uh, with sound or song. Um, at this time, uh, a lot of people are worrying about the economy as it crashes. Um, and this is a shift uh, that can potentially take us away from the corporate nature that has been harming the earth. Um, so we may start to support local growers and meditate on, on, on what we give and how we give. And um, what I'm picking up is that everything that is going to be in integrity, everything that is ethical, everything that is harmonizing and in keeping with nature is going to be the sorts of things that will start to, start to thrive. Um, so if you're an artist, um, you, you may just be very conscious of, of the way that you paint or, or sculpt or the mediums that you work with, that, that you're putting your love and your energy and your heart into your work and that the end product is actually really blessing those that receive it. If you're growing gardens, doing it with love and compassion and care. Um, if you're making a medicinal product or a herbal product, um, 
always doing it with care and honoring the plants and the, and the materials that are the natural materials that are being used so that um, whoever is a recipient of that medicine is is really being blessed and um, and doing it in such a way where the things of the past like greed uh, are let go of so these are the ways that that things are going to thrive as we actually start together with hearts towards one another so it's going to become natural again for us to just take time and do all that we do with love and care so this is part of creating unity um, yeah so in in that jaguar energy you know we may be feeling more drawn to meditate taking time alone communing with nature um, focusing on the earth and her birthing just really holding energy and, and being there for her while she goes through her transition and as she goes through her birthing we're also going through ours so the ninth waves of creation in the in the calendar are pulsing their time waves um, and these are time waves now that are very focused on unity consciousness so since October 2011 this has been the task which has held us um, which is has been held up um, while we break through and we learn from our lessons. So um, Dr. Carl Kellerman has studied and he's written all about the nine waves of creation. Highly recommend this book and his other books, um, The Global Mind. You can learn a lot more about consciousness. Consciousness is key <laughs> to all of this. And then Sean Caulfield's put together some really nice graphics, which um, I'm using today. Thank you, Sean. Um, see here we have uh, the picture of a Mayan calendar with its nine levels so each level is representing an era of time so the bottom level level one went back billions of years ago um, every time we complete a level of the calendar um, through all of the let me see <laughs> uh, the days and the nights of of that time um, moving in that in that time waves and time spirals um, the next level is quickened 20 times so it's when we rose up from level 9 to level 8 that's 20 times quicker in time so that means that it's a shorter period of time until we've got right up to the top of the, the pyramid where we're actually learning how to grow into oneness and unity right through that um, so that completed itself in uh, 2011 and um, now we're retrocending it and I was just looking at this picture of the pyramid here um, so see there's the nine levels there and then right at the top there's, um, gosh, I can't there's this area so this is where we are um, a lot of us are up, up there although many people are still very held in the sixth wave um, the sixth wave started around about oh, 3155 BC something like that and that was when um, all the political things started to come into creation the commerce system the Babylonian um, slave driving techniques uh, everything was harnessed so I'm going to try and explain a little bit more of the history of that because sometimes when we understand some of the history of it it also helps us to see how we are actually progressing forward and the lessons that we've learned and achieved along the way so um, as we learn our lessons and we start to go into unity we actually may start to realize that there's no space left for hating or to have enemies but rather that everything that we have learned is um, is integrated with inside of us and can be uh, um, integrated to the point where we're just loving and living from our heart now and all of these um, knowings and all the knowledge of all our evolution evolution is within and it, and that is the driver of our life now which comes very much from the heart and that is uh, the heart is the unified point within us um, that connects with everyone and everything Okay, so for eons, we've uh, experienced separation from a universal or cosmic source, and in that we've experienced disharmony, imbalance, disease, and harm. 
Uh, so I've looked a lot into Jordan Maxwell's work. He devoted his life and in study into the occult, which is the hidden. And his research explains how unknown or hidden, hidden forces have captured and dominated the life of Earth and all of creation. So in this era, era of the sixth wave, which um, happened after 3155 BC, um, this is where the the limits and the challenges and um, a fight and duality really started to take a hold and started to take a grip. Uh, hierarchies were formed. Pre that, people lived in quite a shamanic era, um, era where they were actually more connected with nature and uh, they were more observing, the mind was more observant of, of what is and then the mind changed in that sixth uh, wave and it became very logical, left-brained, rational, reasoning, quite ego-focused. Um, okay, so there's certain things that fit into this when we look into history. Um, now the Greek Gregorian calendar was developed during the sixth wave and it's really, uh, as I'm seeing it, it's really usurped the creative authority that comes directly from the cosmic axis or the source or Father Sky, what we want to call it. And our mindsets and thoughts and everything um, which were dictated from religious ideas um, in many different religions, you'll find, it, it's like formed like an artificial matrix and timeline. Um, and this calendar came out of the Vatican, and the Vatican came out of Roman law. So the papacy is connected to the religion of Judaism. Um, the official god of Judea Judaism is actually the planet Saturn. Uh, this is based on Jordan Maxwell's work. So Saturn um, is the inhibitor. It holds us back and it teaches us lessons and these lessons have been a vital part of our learning and growth as human beings but they've also been extremely brutal. Um, and the religious mindset has basically placed Saturn in between us and the Creator. And I was once a pastor's wife and there's certain truths that are in the Bible there's a lot of truth that is in the Bible, um, but it's been strongly manipulated. <laughs> and I'll explain that a little bit further along. But one thing that I always remember that stuck with me was that nothing shall come between you and your Creator. However, the actual religion itself has actually placed Saturn in between us and the Creator. Um, so the institutions that are connected to the worship of Saturn um, have caused harm and it can also, uh, it holds many of the elements of Satanism. So institution of harm that exists that I've noticed in my activism times, <laughs> uh, things like uh, the churches, the military, uh, courts, police, lawmakers and commerce and these all have come out of uh, a cult religion which means that a lot of it is hidden a lot of it goes on behind the scenes the sixth wave of creation is where they really took hold and are still holding a lot of humanity hostage and we have to learn how to break through and I would say that it's quite uh, it feels urgent in a sense um, that the control system is really crushing down on a lot of people and the governments are basically controlling whatever we do now. Legislation is taking grips and holds on people so long as we just keep giving that power. So religion and mind control through government um, is being used to control people and create a social order. Uh, land ownership and other fictions have been established. Priests and courts uphold the letter of the law. And it's um, been recently more discovered how satanic ritual is performed in these institutions. Um, I'm extremely sensitive. Satanic ritual has unfortunately been 
uh, part of my past, which I have been spending my life recovering from, doing very well, thank you. Um, okay, so family courts remove children from their homes and it's been common, very common among the indigenous people of lands that their children have been taken for no good reason. Um, and there's been many ways that the control system has tried to manage children and many children have been harmed and lost. So part of what I do is I had a very strong compulsion that what happened to me, I didn't want to see that happening to any more children. So I've had to explore and look and learn and the mind calendar has actually given me a lot of keys into how this thing came into being and how we can actually set ourselves free. Now, the Gregorian calendar actually holds the energies of and powers of that. It's actually, as I see it, is based upon human sacrifice. So, um, it, the life of Jesus, um, who was called the Son of Man. Okay, so there are ritual dates in the calendar and there's times when sacrifices have been, uh, are secretly performed. Um, the energy of the calendar is, is used. Um, mankind has then thus become like a sacrifice for the purposes and intents of the controllers and many children unfortunately have been harmed. And it's, hard, it's a hard thing for many people to hear but we can also set them free by starting to align with nature and actually break through to create com conscious community um, and to really connect our hearts and start to really love. So the Old Testament is actually, of the Bible, is actually filled with stories of blood sacrifice. It's filled with stories of war, harm and torture. Sacraments that are offered in churches, um, uh, like a ritual around the eating of sacrifice, human flesh and human blood. Something I've never been able to understand. Um, many children have actually been rescued from the underground um, while paedophile rings and a lot of the satanic nature is actually being cleansed now um, on this planet. On that. But we're not going to hear about this because Mainstream media is, is owned by um, Illuminati figures or those that are very much uh, a part of the occult, um, that are part of keeping the sixth wave uh, Satan or Saturn worship energy, um, the great inhi inhibitor in place. Okay. Now, what I've discovered from Jordan Maxwell's work and other scholars, one who was even um, used to be within the Vatica, Vatican, um, is that the creation story of the Bible was actually written from the Sumerian tablets, but it's actually been in a very manipulated way, and that puts forward one jealous, vengeful God who requires all the energy of worship to be given to itself. Okay, so um, in the Sumerian tablets, they talked about the Elohim, which actually means many gods. And in indigenous culture, um, before the missionaries and colonization happened, um, there often were many gods. Um, in the Maori uh, culture, Ranganui is Father Sky and Papatuanuku is Mother Earth and there's gods of the forest and there's different gods of nature that are um, just a natural part um, of, of the conscious awareness. But when the colonization happened, um, first of all, one of the first things that happened is that missionaries would come in and start to uh, teach the children and convert people into into Christianity. So laws come out of the church. Uh, Roman law came from scribes and Pharisees that we read about in the Christian Bible. Today they are kind of like the legislators and the court personnel that try to hold legislation up. Uh, it's very punitive um, and it keeps people in a conformity 
to uh, uh, a matrix which is actually a fictional overlay which has actually been um, burdening nature and creation and humanity and all the animals and and our planet so written the written words in the legal system have caused a lot of harm and they do cause a lot of harm and currently health legislation is being written for mandatory vaccinations and more removal of children from homes but also uh, now in New Zealand um, people have to sign every time you go into a, a if you want to buy things in, in a lot of shops you have to sign in and if they uh, discover that you may have been uh, a part um, con in contact with other people with this COVID-19 um, they're making legislation that they can come and detain you when really you could just be self-quarantined in your in your home for two for two weeks but it's sort of getting more and more and more draconian um, the laws to try to control these things under an agenda of, of this this virus so just getting it so that's sort of ha you know how it's happening um, so originally um, out of the sixth wave as countries were invaded and colonized um, the written word began and declarations and treaties and constitutions and the wording would took hold very much like these are word spells there's power in these um, people were then governed and controlled by the colonizers um, in the beginning was the word um, and shortly following were the missionaries who taught people what to believe and to give their devotion to this vengeful god that required worship um, children were schooled by missionaries and sometimes uh, there were brutal and bloody wars, uh, people were brought into line. Uh, the Spanish Inquisition is a very good example of a, of a brutal um, um, a brutal colonization um, that actually sought to wipe out the Maya and the knowledge of the Maya and the traditions and, and the people who were aligning with nature and living by the law, like nature's law, L-O-R-E rather than the written law, L-A-W. Okay, um, so then people were becoming paid slaves basically, worked and taxed, but you know there were payoffs for it, so it made it look like um, this was a civilization. Um, but indigenous people all over the world had been and still are healing from the wounds of, of genocide. Um, and I'm most of my friends in New Zealand, most of my closest friends are Maori um, and still carry the scars and the wounds of genocide um, in their DNA. And um, it's, it's incredibly sad, but my friends are absolutely awesome. I have to say, and that they are all working on solutions and how do we get ourselves out of this and very unity focused. Okay, um, so getting back to this energy of the Gregorian calendar which was installed by the Vatican and holds the energies of commerce. Um, in the New Age movement um, and even the UFO movement, uh, there are often global meditations which are called on what they call gateway days which will just have a numerical sequence within the Gregorian calendar like the 4th of April 2020 or 2020 which adds up to 444 in that, in that numerics. Um, now many people may have noticed that uh, they did have a, a global mass meditation that was called upon um, and if we look back and we evaluate what happened since the 4th of April uh, 2020 a great lot of darkness was ushered in and I could actually see it coming and I was trying to warn people not to give their energy of worship um, or that collective meditation energy to that date because it was actually quite a if you, if you there'll be other people that 
that study this, but it was actually quite a ritualistic time when the Illuminati and the uh, were holding all their secret, a lot of secret sacrifices and rituals in the background. So this energy of, of, of getting a lot of people to meditate all at once is like an energy of worship and that energy is harnessed and um, their agenda empowered. <laughs> so this is what I see um, happening. Now, there was a great big spike of, of amplitude um, on the Schumann resonance that coincided with this meditation. Um, now, a lot of people were saying, oh, you know, that it just showed that was great but to me and my sensitivity and what I felt it was it was um, a recoil of the earth um, because all of these energies it was the false matrix was gaining more um, more power uh, from the energy of worship um, now anything I say you just discern it for yourself but just look back look at it and also many of the people I know that did venture into that um, meditation. Some friends of mine that I knew that were quite sensitive felt it was wrong and immediately stopped. And others uh, actually felt quite a lot of exhaustion. Um, and so some people did notice that something wasn't quite right uh, with that. Uh, anyway, so meditating and the call for worship. Um, now, a god, <laughs> uh, Ranganui, Papatuanuku, uh, uh, creator, father sky, mother earth, they never desire the energy of worship. They're much more like first forces or that we resonate with, that we are one with, that we become uh, one with. Worship means giving your energy to something. So, you know, some people have called it warship. <laughs> um, you know, but anyway, it's just to just to develop our consciousness and be mindful, and just like as we go into our meditations during this um, night phase, let's just really check these things out for ourselves, because I do believe that we our own information is the best, and as we can connect directly to Father Sky and Mother Earth without all these other. Um, things in between I feel that it's just the purest connection like if we are standing like the reed or if we're standing like the corn with our feet planted into the earth and our crown receiving those cosmic waves that come in and not um, by any other entities or um, forces or archangels or um, now we all have a different perception of these, so I'm not saying they're wrong or they're right, but let's just be mindful that we can go direct to source and that our greatest despair has been the separation of source and that religion and the sixth wave and um, politics and all of these things actually stand in between that connection. So the Maya and many indigenous people of the earth um, heal the earth with ceremony, with dance, with song, with the elements. And they align with natural law and the energy is pure. And um, there have also been, you know, the Mayan calendar is based on quantum science. And this is why I'm, it's my calendar and it's been my guide. I know that I've had many Mayan past lives and it has spoken to me and I was called forth in sacred ceremony to, to remember and to clear myself to start to get the information more clear and more strong and, and wonderful people like Carl Kellerman and Sean Kellerman did come into my life and personally mentored me and encouraged me. Um, very good people um, that are holding keys uh, keys to our evolution and, and how we can really move forward with um, knowing that we are going to get through this very difficult time. Um, so this has led me to look at everything. So uh, some of what I'm discussing is not their work. It's, it's, it's um, my personal research. It's my personal involve uh, with being in activism. Um, my life experience of having to be um, 
of being a, a sacrifice um, in in satanic ritual as a child and having to to heal and recover, but also knowing and seeing the bigger picture that a part of me took that experience on to heal that, to know it, to be able to see the bigger picture of everything that goes on and to help people out and to have a passion for the future of our children and also for the birthing of um, a new era and the new earth. Okay, so um, there is a difference between ritual and ceremony. Um, so ritual is a rite that invokes power and harnesses energy um, and it's very occult. Um, and ceremony is actually um, more like a celebration that honors nature and creation and it's in keeping with divine will and divine time. So it's not forcing an agenda. It's not a ritual that is being performed to make something happen. It's actually a ceremony where we connect with source and we bring back the energy of nature and we come more into the resonance and the harmony and the balance of earth and, and heal and move on from there. So these are things that I find personally highly important. Um, I would encourage people to rather use their own indigenous calendars to, if you know, for a record of time. Um, there is a Maori uh, calendar um, which will give people guidance around planting and harvesting and working with nature and fishing. Um, there's astrological calendars that people use, which is based more on Newtonian physics around the moon. What I do like for myself, uh, that the mind calendar is based upon the quantum science and the waves of time. Um, and, and, and as these waves are quickening, our consciousness is changing and that we are um, coming into our heart energy and this is the time for us to come into unity together to love, to practice unconditional love with each, with each other like whoever we are with in this time, in this night wave we have an opportunity to, um, to grow with each other by being by, by learning, you know, I'm learning trust, I'm learning, I've been given a beautiful opportunity now to be in a home and warm over the winter um, with people that are dedicated to growing and learning, um, people that are wanting to communicate and, and practice love. Um, so wherever we are and whoever we're with, uh, that is what we can do in the energy of read. Um, and uh, look, I really um, send my love and blessings to you all. I encourage you to just keep loving, just keep loving. If that, that's my mantra, just keep loving. Um, I'm just going to seal what I have said um, with light language, which I I know is a, a language of light, which comes from from the stars and through the channel of my being, um, and then I thank you for coming this far to listen to the entirety of this. And I'm very open to questions. Any questions that this raises, I will meditate on and um, and. I'm willing to answer and address. Okay. Seal the roshor and yaris yalo saya kweri. Sam yonder de salo rus yaya saru Cora sol yum borra sae so purum bay reptieri. Kira sae la doronia hum kesti. 